Let me go. Give it a sec. Give it a sec. This is so janky. <laughs> I love it. And we are live. Welcome to the WAN Show. We've got a fantastic show for you guys today. There's been a ton of news. There's the whole epic Apple lawsuit thing. That Oh man, that works so well. It epic does. Apple it lawsuit. Super does. Absolutely yeah. love it. The whole thing is flipping epic. There's Corsair's IPO. Corsair? Corsair is trying to go public? What? What? pretty wild i'm I'm sure covid oddly enough has actually helped that quite a bit with their acquisition of believe Elgato. believe it or not they've got some deets about that in their uh, in their filings so we're, we're definitely going to yes. dig into that what else we got today apple may be preparing its own search engine of of all things and uh well, they're so good at maps <laughs> Oof. probably a rough subject over there <laughs> uh, and there's a, a russian hacking plot that targeted a tesla factory it's actually kind of kind of juicy yeah oh man I, I actually forgot about that one when you were when you stepped away i teased them about what we had nvidia confirms the new 12 volt connector and yeah. teases accurate rtx 3000 series coolers like oh there's so much stuff so let's not wait let's get into it should be a good week And here I am just breaking my F5 button, trying to figure out when the app information is going to update. I know, right? We should talk about that too. That's yes. sort of, it's actually kind of related to one of our news items here. The yep. whole like Apple being at war with their developers situation that they got going on. So why don't we jump right into, why don't we jump right into that one first then? Um, sure. Split decision in the epic Apple lawsuit results in a split Fortnite. And I realize a lot of you guys might not play Fortnite or you might be all be all down on Fortnite because it's for kids or it's a bad game or whatever the case may be. But platform uh, fragmentation like this is honestly just not really good for anyone. Like the, the overwhelming trend in the industry over the last few years, and I've been very supportive of this, is towards Absolutely. more cross-platform play more cross-platform interaction, uh, better cross-platform licensing. Microsoft has absolutely been a pioneer when it comes to cross-platform licensing of games, for example, where you buy it for one system yeah. and you've, you, you, that's a game that you own and you want to play it on your PC, your Xbox, your other more different Xbox. You're good. You own it. This is, this is never good and always bad for the consumer when this kind of fragmentation happens but let's dig a little bit into why it's happening so a u.s district judge handed legal victories and defeats to both apple and epic in their app store feud for those of you who are a little behind the times on this developing story pretty much um epic is real sick and tired of paying 30 percent of their in-app revenue to apple and Google, but they've been really focused more on Apple with the cheekier aspects of this whole thing. Um, Apple is real happy collecting 30% of all revenues that go through the App Store, <laughs> and that's causing some conflict. Um, Epic tried to get an exception not just for themselves, they actually asked for a reduction in fees for other developers as well. Apple basically said no, so Epic gave them a big Nyeh! with like an in-game event where they did a parody of Apple's famous 1984 commercial and all that kind of stuff. Served them with a gigantic lawsuit outlining why Apple's behavior is monopolistic and should be illegal. And then Apple turned around and basically yoinked not just Fortnite, from the App Store, but actually, unlike on Android, Apple can remove Fortnite from phones where it's already yeah. installed. They actually do have that power. And to add insult to injury, Apple um, <clears throat> pulled Epic's Unreal Engine developer tools that they need, not just for themselves for Fortnite, but also for their customers who license the Unreal Engine for games that run on Apple devices. 
So that's that's the, the history. Now let's get into what's gone on this week. So neither side got the slam dunk that they had each hoped for. So the court partly granted and partly denied Epic's motion for a temporary restraining order on Apple pulling their development tools and Fortnite from the App Store. So, um, but <clears throat> Apple is temporarily restrained from taking any action against Epic Games in retaliation for their lawsuit um, with respect to restricting, suspending, or terminating any affiliate of Epic Games from the Apple Dev program, including Unreal Engine. So basically, it's it's localized to Fortnite specifically. Yes. Which actually kind of makes sense. Isn't that crazy that Fortnite has become this, like, not just cultural phenomenon in terms of games but like, like the, the 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 eye of this storm like around chess piece yeah right isn't yeah. that crazy <laughs> it's pretty wild now apple can continue banning fortnite on the app store until epic returns to its pre-ban returns it to its pre-ban condition in which it no longer tries to bypass in-app purchase fees right i missed that part where epic as part of their neener neener just included a way to buy i forget what the in-game currency is called in fortnite i'm v -bucks. sorry v bucks sure whatever i don't play but i've been following the news on this a lot sure they, they made it so you could buy v bucks in game bypassing apple's 30 percent cut um so here's what's going to happen then because i really don't foresee epic backing down on this remember yeah. guys this we're talking if epic gets the kind of fee structure that they think is fair which based on their own epic game store is somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 to 15 percent we're talking tens or even hundreds of millions of dollars of revenue that are being fought over here and epic has already at this point soured the relationship you know tim and tim are not going to be getting together for like, you know, a bro, a bro down, you know, gaming session <laughs> or like, I don't know, whatever Tim Cook does for fun um, anytime soon. So like the relationship's already sour. There's tens or hundreds of millions of dollars on the line. They've already, not just that, but they've already invested in all the legal fees to put this case together. I really don't think they're going to back down. So what's no. happening is Fortnite is going to be splitting into two different games since iOS players are going to be stuck on the current version for some time. So PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch, PC, and Android players will all continue to have cross-play compatibility and new content, and Apple users will be left without any new content. Uh, so they're essentially held in limbo in the game's current state. <sighs> it's interesting because they... they So are they pulling their custom payments then? to get back um, on the app store because dude, as far as my understanding goes i didn't have it installed, well i don't think so they're don't on the app store so they're not on the app store and they were removed from ios phones were they not uh well i don't think apple ever actually did that oh okay they so they, they have the ability to but yes they, they can but check this out so here's ebay um so that that looks fine apple iphone 10s max got a you know sure got an auction there hold on a second let's just go Whoa! Ho, ho, ho. Is that a three thousand dollar iPhone with Fortnite on it? What? Whoa! Two thousand dollar iPhone with Fortnite. Oh, plus AirPods comes with AirPods. Uh, what else we got? Twenty six hundred dollars. Let's see if we can find some uh, iPhones with Fortnite. Hold on a second. Uh, show only sold items. Here we go. Is so there is there like some way to see? uh what the highest one of these has actually sold for well, like, are these actually moving this one sold at 1750 an iphone 10 r 64 gig with fortnite installed for 1750 um some of them are going for not a lot so it seems to kind of come down to luck of the draw if you're going to find a taker so a uh, brand new iphone xr 64 gig is 799 so that was essentially someone someone essentially paid a thousand dollars to have fortnite installed is that uh, right apparently that's what it looks like. So this has a couple of bids right here. So there's a 10s Max 256 gig for $1,700. Um, so it looks like it's kind of all over the place, but there are definitely people that are paying more for an iPhone with Fortnite installed. So it shows you what the demand is like. And what I wonder is if, because yes, Epic could easily return their app to a, here you go, Apple, here's 30% of our V-Bucks revenue state. 
and their users would be allowed to have uh, new Fortnite updates. But it seems like w the hmm, it seems like the gamble that Epic is banking on here is that between their 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 verbiage in all of their um, in all their materials they've released about this and their parody and the way they've sort of rally railed against Apple as as a monopolist and all that it seems like they are counting on themselves looking like the good guys in this in what's yeah. probably going to become a war of attrition this could take a very long time because if epic plays their cards right here the customers will put pressure on Apple to yield and give developers a, a better share of the revenue and epic will win that way but if Epic miscalculated here and users side with Apple and they think that 30% is a perfectly fair amount to pay um, for basically payment processing and this and a safe platform, because really that's a lot of Apple's argument is we need that money to so it's even worth our time to keep investing in the App Store. That's basically how it came across when I was reading it. I was like, really, you guys? No, you invest in the App Store because you need to sell a lot of iPhones. Even if you got 5%, you'd keep investing in the App Store because that's what makes you a relevant platform. Developers, 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 develop. Sorry. <laughs> that, was a, that was an epic. You should, uh, if, if you look, if, I bet you if you just search developers, 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 you'll find what that was a reference to. Yeah, yeah. Funny. It's, oh, it's so funny. It's that, great. That guy is like a bazillionaire now and owns a sports team. It's like, how you, you whatever. The world is, the world's a funny place to live. <laughs> um, but anyway. Speaking of all of this, should I trans? Okay, I'll say no, one more thing. No, I want, I want okay. your opinion first on this. Okay. So, which way do you think the typical Apple customer is going to go? Who do they blame? Because either Apple or Epic can fix this with the push of a button. Who do they blame? I I think the average Fortnite fan is going to blame Apple just because they want to play their game. But and hold there's on. there's going to be some like tilting there. No, I want to argue with you because, okay. you know, okay, let's, I hate to stereotype, but we're going to stereotype a little bit here. Who is the average Fortnite fan? How old are you? 12? Uh, Somewhere between is this Googleable? 10, 10 um, and 14. You know, like you're, you're, you're somewhere in like you have a lot of time to spend on your phone. You think a phone is a platform for like hardcore gaming and you like, you know, cartoony games like Fortnite or whatever. Like, I, I don't know. You like, you think dancing and game is really cool. Like you're probably somewhere between like, you know, nine and 25. Why don't, why don't we say that? So it, it says that 62.7% of the player base is 18 to 24, but they don't have any age group distribution that's below 18. Okay. So uh, I think all their numbers are going to be wrong. Okay, so more than half are 24 and under. Why don't we call it that? Yeah. Okay, then. Now, let me hit you with this. The rabid Apple fanboys. You know, like I was reading a really interesting article about Apple's uh, market share in the U.S., like in high schools, for example, you can walk around a high school in the U S and it is hard to find an Android phone. Like that, really? bl that blue message bubble is a big deal. Like we see, we even see posts on the forum about it and stuff. Like someone's like, schools? yeah, someone's like, uh, you know, yeah, it's like crazy. My friends are all like, what's wrong with you? You got an Android phone. Like what are you poor people or something? Because that, that's the thing about the iPhone is that... Oh, what's with all these ballin' parents? They're really uh, expensive phones. Why are you buying that for your kids? Well, I don't remember, understand. remember, there's a couple different factors here. So one, Apple has more affordable phones now. The 10R is actually a great value considering it has a flagship processor in it. 800 bucks. Don't yeah. forget that carrier subsidies are a big thing. So you buy an iPhone... 10, like, what's an iPhone 10R? iPhone 10R Verizon... Three-year plan, right? So you buy an iPhone 10R on a three-year plan from Verizon. Here we go. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know. I'm not American, so I'm not familiar with yeah, this stuff off the top of my head here. It'd be great if this page would hurry up and load here. Okay, twenty dollars and eighty-three cents a month. So that's what Apple has managed to do. Is they've managed to turn something that's actually very affordable. Um, if you have like even even a small amount of income, like casual work on the side as a kid. And when you consider how much an iPhone or really any good phone can do, 
It's not unreasonable to spend that amount of your income on your phone, assuming you don't also need like, you know, a computer and laptop, like a desktop and a laptop and like all these other things like your iPhone might take the place of, you know, when we were kids, maybe you had a portable music player, right? Maybe you had a, a Game Boy or a PSP or Vita or whatever. Uh, maybe you maybe you also had a flip cell phone or whatever, like the one device takes all those places. So yeah. even though like, you know, that kid at school that had a Discman and, uh, and, a, and a portable game console, right, might not be the most balling out kid ever. If they save their pennies, they, they might have that stuff actually. Yeah. So I, yeah, it's not totally unreasonable for kids to have iPhones. So if we consider that this is the same demographic that religiously buys iPhones, do you want to change your answer? Hit me. I don't think so. Okay, why? Most, most, most of the so, I've been following. I've been, I've been getting some flack from the audience uh, on Twitter about apparently not knowing what I'm talking about in regards to what we've done with the iOS app, which I'm extremely excited to talk about oh, shortly. Yeah. Um, but I've also been tagged in a lot of these discussion threads, mm -hmm. which I have never been involved with but have gotten lots of notifications about them so i've been kind of following along at people debating each other about apple versus fortnite oh and there's like, okay there's okay three or four different threads where these like two twitter dudes that i don't think have ever talked to each other before have just been going back and forth for like a week one of them is like i'm assuming hundreds of messages long at this point oh wow um and so far with my extremely limited view, I understand that. I have seen mostly like this guy's like, I play Fortnite and they are very much embracing the uh, 1984 commercial. Yeah. Bring down the man. The 30% is crushing developers yep. mentality, which I actually, I agree with quite a bit. 30% is a ton. It's a lot. Like you, it, it's, it's a massive amount to digest. So I, I get that part. And then most of the other side of the argument that I've been seeing has been entirely embracing Apple's messaging of security and and just like ease, ease of use for the user and security. And that's mostly it. it I haven't seen a ton of like, oh, the 30% makes, th that that's what they should be making. There's, right. I, there has been some of that, but I think the, the majority of the argument that I've seen from that side has been the security and reliability of that payment processor. Now, to be clear, I, I don't disagree with you. I think you're probably right. I think that the relationship that Epic Games manages to build with customers um, or has managed to create with their customers over the last couple of years is absolutely incredible. They have done, hands down, a phenomenal job, 100%. You, can't, you can never take that away from them. Um, and I think that most people will probably want to put pressure on Apple over this. And I also want to address um, some of the discussion around the, the 30%. Because I think what some people think is that this is all about 30% being the right number according to Apple and being the wrong number according to Epic Games. But this is actually a much, much bigger conversation than that. The conversation is around Apple's monopolistic position in the market. It's yeah. around that that 30% is controlled by an entity that has far more power over the people that wouldn't like it than is uh, fair in a, in like a free and open market. So what if, what Epic Games is saying is that, well, okay, uh, fine, if you want to charge 30% on your Apple App Store, then power to you. But in order for this to not be a monopoly, because you, Apple, have so much market share in the mobile space, you're going to have to open it up to other app stores. Now, we would accept a lower percentage in the Apple App Store, but if you're not willing to yield on that, then we're going to go after you for what we perceive to be monopolistic behavior. And quite frankly, I think Apple's going to lose this fight because it's exactly, I mean, it's exactly the kind of stuff that Apple used to sit on the sidelines being too small for anyone to care about when Microsoft was getting beat up for it by the European Union back in the early 2000s. Like, 
or throughout the 2000s, really, actually. But now that Apple's in this position of power, they have absolutely abused it. And so now they're just getting a taste of their own medicine, really. Um, in my in my limited opinion, I, I think Microsoft was actually in less violation of this type of stuff than Apple currently is in. And I think America and a lot of other countries have sat on their butts in terms of antitrust laws for a very long time. And this might be the the reawakening re reawakening of those types of enforcement because it's it's gotten a little yeah. ridiculous, especially yeah. with mobile platforms. So I guess this is a perfect segue into uh, all the people. I I got such a kick. You know, it wasn't just on Twitter throughout the week. It was in the chat last week as well about how how stupid you guys were thinking that submitting an iOS app should work the way that you think it should work. And if you had any experience, you would have obviously known that what you guys were doing was wrong. Um, there was a ton of that in the chat last week. About, oh, it's, it's been a lot. <laughs> yeah, we should give a we should give a short a short recap. Basically, the Floatplane app got pulled um, because Apple was complaining that. I mean, what even what even were they? Basically, they they thought that the Floatplane app was not doing a good enough job of a protecting users from user generated content. So that was in the form yes. of comments under the videos. So there Honestly, was- I almost forgot about that because that was a long time ago. But yeah. yes, that was a big thing. So there was that. Uh, there was also that they complained that Floatplane was a pay platform where the subscriptions were taking place off the app where Apple was not getting their 30% cut. So um, Luke and the team over at Floatplane tried every which way to get it approved, even going as far as to remove commenting from the iOS app and um, remove- We removed commenting. We yep. removed every single reference to floatplane.com from the entire app, including all FAQs, all support links, everything else. There, there are support links still there. They're just not to floatplane.com, which to me is a, a minor security issue, but that's fine. Uh, I would feel awkward not going to floatplane.com to get support or FAQs, but whatever. If they're going to try to defend security issues for the payment thing, whatever, I'll move on. Um, we, we did a lot of stuff. There was a lot of iteration, iterations trying to get this through the App Store. Um, but we got to the point where the denials that they were sending us, um, like even even really early on, they were super cryptic, which is an extremely frustrating thing to deal with. Like if someone's like trying to give you feedback about something that you're doing and they try to give you that feedback in a riddle, like just why, right? Like that's, that's just really yeah. annoying. You'd rather just fix the problem and move on. Yeah. And honestly, if they had some issues with our app, like it's your platform, buddy. Just, just tell like us what can... it is. We can fix some problems. Like that's that. Well, it just started Issue to feel was... like they didn't want us to fix it. Yes, um, and and that it, that got to the point where like we had done so much due diligence that the things that they were claiming were actually just factually not true. Yeah, um, we had removed just like the the app deal and asked for a callback, so they would call me. Which, by the way, is a terrible system because. You can't set up like uh, they don't call you through like the the dashboard. You can't set up a account. They just call your cell phone at some random time within three to five days. Which yeah, absolutely didn't happen. Uh, they yeah. called me. Way, they called me today. So they called me, which I was expecting. Seven call last days week. later, so twelve yeah. days. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Well, three to five business days to be fair, but they were still super late. Um, but yeah, we got the call. Guy on the phone said, "I reviewed your app." uh before calling you and you're correct your app is in fact not in violation of anything on the store uh we're going to be reinstating you it was like a 35 second call <laughs> uh so the the full plane app is is it the status on the uh, dashboard is ready for sale and it is currently rolling out and we have changed yep. nothing in so the last like many weeks so thank you all the experts who were a hundred percent sure yes. that luke and his team had no idea what they were doing uh apparently uh you know you can keep your expertise to yourself next time and that would be <laughs> that would be best look look it's one of those things i get it i get it i've run my mouth i've run my mouth before i've had to make apology so videos I. You know, yeah. I get it. I get it. It's not. It's not fun. It's a hard position. But you were wrong, and the floatplane app was fine. 
and Apple was just, I don't know, is it malice or incompetence at this point? What do you attribute I, this to? I'm thinking, I'm thinking incompetence. You're thinking um, incompetence? Giving them the benefit of the doubt. I like it. I, I like the, it. The way a lot of the messages were worded even, yeah. it really felt like they... Like, just had no idea what's going on. Had no clue what they were looking at or what they were doing or possibly what day it was. Uh, and they were just being like, boop, denied without my, looking into anything. My favorite was when you literally ripped off the messaging from the Netflix app for like how, <laughs> for how registrations off app would work. And they yeah. were like, this wording is unacceptable. And it yeah. was like you had changed like Netflix to float plane. I mean, not because we wanted to, to be clear. No. We're not trying to like steal Netflix's. No. We're just trying to get the app on the store. And clearly Netflix is on the store. So if that word is okay for Netflix, it should be okay for us. But it wasn't. But it is. But it, And it probably was. And that's that's actually something I want to bring up too is like we definitely went too far. Because I don't yeah. know where the line was anymore. Because clearly we passed yeah. it at some point. But now we can do bug fixes as long as we put that in our in our change log and we can like change stuff, right? Well, now, yeah, now we can actually make it so that people on the iOS app can actually see the new types of content that are able to be posted onto Flowplane, which is good because the it just didn't work anymore because we had moved so far past the feature set that we had months ago, which was the last time that they actually allowed us to update the freaking app. Um, and now we can we can try to crawl back, add some more features. I want to try to get comments back in the app. Comments would um, be nice. The flow play I, comments I wanna, are so nice. Yeah, I, I and we like have the moderation and stuff that they were asking for. Like we, we literally do. And we told them that and they're just like, no. So I, I'm going to try to walk back some of these features, but we're going to do it uh, step by step, trying to add only one thing at a time, so we can very easily tell what caused denials and whatnot, and we'll we'll grow the feature set over there and make it a bit easier and better to use. But um, yeah, I Hugh, don't know when it's going to be live, but it's coming. Hugo Calveron says, "Okay, I'm filing a lawsuit against you for not letting me put my images on your merch at Linus Tech Tips. You got some reading to do." <laughs> That's really not how this works. <laughs> That's yep. not not, it, not how antitrust law works. I'm not an expert, but but that ain't it, chief. That, that, ain't, <laughs> that ain't that ain't it, chief. Uh, all right, why don't we jump into our headline topic for the day? Uh, NVIDIA confirming the new 12 volt connector. This is great because I remember commenting on the rumors and then having someone come out very confidently and correct me that it was proven to be false. Um, nope, nope, it's real. Illegal Water on the forums posted it after many weeks of rumors and speculation. The new 12 pin connector has finally been confirmed by Team Green as has the inclusion of an 8-pin adapter with RTX 3000 GPUs. So it's not that you are going to necessarily have to change out your power supply. It's just that if you want to run a native connection between your power supply and your fancy new graphics card, you are going to have to change out your power supply. Now, what's one cool... One quick second, one quick second. I want yeah. to interject really quickly. Yeah. A bunch of people are saying the the app is on the App Store now. Oh, uh, groovy! One, one thing one thing you want to look for because it it is actually showing up properly on my end. But you want to look for version zero point three point one because All in right. this process we had actually re-enabled the old janky app and just not told anyone that it was there because we were like trying to get something to work. Right. Uh, so yeah, you're looking for version zero point three point one. If it's version one point something, yes, we did that many revisions. Um, or is your sorry 0 0.1 point something uh that is the wrong one and it hasn't propagated in your area it shows 0 0.3.1 that is the right one it All is right. extremely cut down and very bare bones we will be adding features over time yeah we're sorry it's not not our choice it was um, not our choice yet. all right back to the uh back to the new connector so one of the cool things that's happened over the last 10 years though is the proliferation of modular power supplies now back when modular power supplies first showed up i remember one of the talking points that i would often bring up for them is that what's cool about a modular power supply is that if the connector standards change all you have to do is change a cable you don't actually have to change out your power supply. And to be honest with you, 
It's been so long since any PC power connector has changed. I totally forgot about that. But yeah. here we are, RTX 3000, new 12 volt connectors with 12 pins. And if you've got a modular power supply, either through your power supply manufacturer or through a third party, there is a solid chance that you'll be able to just upgrade your power supply so you can have a straight 12 pin connection right into your graphics card to look nice and clean. So in a video uploaded on Wednesday, NVIDIA detailed the design processes for past and present GPUs along with the challenges faced in powering and cooling high-end graphics. Man, the 3090 looks flippin' huge. It's like 2080 Ti, and then next to it, like a 3090, it's like this big. It's crazy because <laughs> it's tall, it's long. Uh, the new 12-pin connector is actually much smaller than two 8-pins and is oriented vertically and angled 45 degrees for reasons that I'm sure make sense to NVIDIA. I, we should actually, here, we should grab a, we should grab a picture. Why don't we fire up uh, Anand Tech? There we go. NVIDIA confirms. Ah, written by the one and only Dr. Cutress. What's up, Ian? <laughs> Check him out at Tech Tech Potato. Tech Tech Potato on YouTube. All right. So here's the PCB. You got to love that, you know, bullet exit wound PCB shape they got going on here. That's because there's a fan blowing right through the cooler here. And then there it is. Single 12 pin connector coming out at this angle that I guess is good for cable management or something perpendicular to the pcb which is very peculiar indeed yeah oh there it is nvidia 12 pin right there it's gonna look a little something like that nvidia states in the video that this 12 pin design is of its own creation and we have no idea if this is going to actually become an industry standard for it to happen amd would probably have to adopt it and hey i mean intel at this point if they ever launch their dedicated graphics um I could see I could see AMD potentially getting behind something like this if it is a genuine improvement in experience for the viewer, uh, for the viewer, for the user. Uh, having yeah. just one connector go into a, a high-end graphics card would be pretty sweet. Again, just from like a cable management and ease of use standpoint. So we'll see, we'll see. But in the meantime, you can use the dual 8-pin to single 12-pin adapter that is going to be included with these RTX 3000 series graphics cards. Which, so you like it? I like it. I like it. It's yeah. smaller. It can carry, quote-unquote, much more power. Uh, Igor's lab's assessment uh, previously was that it could carry up to 600 watts. So that's basically all we are realistically going to need because... Yeah. Like cooling 600 watts in in a graphics card form factor is or more than 600 watts is not happening um we've got some new I think it's awesome i i'm i'm i've always had a, at least a minor issue with pcie power especially when they they just use six pins because then you have that super annoying yeah i don't know i'm, I'm excited for this i like the one cable run i think cable management guys are gonna love this yep good it's good Yep. And without over-engineering it to the point where you have like a super long PCI Express slot, Apple style, yeah. this is, this yeah. is, this is fine. This, this is fine. One cable seems like a good compromise. Uh, yep. NVIDIA gave some new details about the cooler. So the air will be drawn up from the bottom fan through the V-shaped PCB. So when they say V-shaped, they mean with like this, like cutout on the one side. So up through that, uh, and heatsink fins, and then up and out through the top fan to exhaust with the CPU and rear case fan. So it'll come like up and then like out or something, apparently. <gasps> okay. Fascinating. Um, so we've got a sneak peek of what the cooler looks like flashed at the end of the video here. So let's go ahead and get my... Ooh, wow. Okay. Um, ah, whatever. Good enough. Okay. So here, let's go back. There we go. That was it. Yeah, that really is a, that's a sneak, whoops, that's a sneak peek and a half there, ladies and gentlemen. Blah, 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 old, old, old graphics, old graphics, old news. Yeah, 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 get on with it. Here we go. Okay, so it's blowing through the thing and then we get, the, oh, really? That's it? Wow. All right, that wasn't even, that was totally 10 out of 10, not worth it. Not worth it. I regret clicking on it. Uh, so there's an event called GeForce Ultimate Countdown scheduled for September 1st, which would lead us to assume that there were, there's going to be some kind of news about this very, 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 very soon. 
I'm jazzed. I'm jazzed. I can't wait for 1400 US dollar top tier graphics cards. You know that's the rumored pricing, right, Luke? Yeah, uh, I definitely won't be springing for that. You know what's the worst part about new graphics cards being so much more expensive than the previous gen? The previous gen will maintain price. Yeah, better. yeah, that. Yeah. That's the worst part because that was always my strat. Like back when I was a student, that was always my strat was high end last it's, gen for cheap. It's such a good one. You get really solid, very stable drivers yep. that are that are mature. So the graphics card is going to have better performance in the applications that you're using it in than on launch day, yep. almost certainly. Um, or at least it, less it, flakiness. It, yeah, yeah yep. it, it makes a lot of sense. It's, it's not so old. Approach. It's not so old that they can justify just kind of not paying attention to it. Right. Yeah. So it's like new enough that you're still getting all the bug fi fixes and like game day drivers for like hot new games and all that kind of stuff. And if you do your flip every time, it's still not so old that no one's interested in it. Mm -hmm. People are still going to be interested in that card because it's still worth very something. Usable. Yep. Yeah. Not so much. I mean, as long as Nvidia keeps delivering higher graphics performance and charging more for it, it's just basically like 1080 Ti's are going to be worth a ton of money forever as far as i can tell <laughs> like when, when did the 1080 ti come out graphics card tech is moving so slowly these days um, they still go for 450 to 500 us dollars <laughs> on ebay that was they like came out march 10th 2017 come on <laughs> come on that was three and a half years ago Imagine what? buying a three and a half year old graphics card for for what you said over four hundred dollars, right? Mm -hmm. in, in the like eighty eight hundred GTX era, but <laughs> no way. <laughs> even if even if you scale that pricing for inflation, whatever, it's still ridiculous. No, there's no way. We actually did a really fun build this week. Uh, that video is going to be coming up probably sometime in the next week or two, uh, where we used the Wayback Machine. You know, the Internet Archive. To go yes. shopping on NCIX in December, Christmas time, 2005. That was my idea, wasn't it? Was it? Well, we yeah. did it. I didn't, credit, I didn't credit you. I'm sorry. I totally <laughs> forgot you pitched it. Yeah, I'm no, sorry, fine, Luke. Fine. Please no, forgive fine, me. Forgive I think, me. I think we, we were way back machining NCIX on the WAN show. <sighs> and I said, like, you should pick parts from here. Before. You're right. You're right. So we did. Uh, so we That's decided cool. on 2005. Okay. And we built a machine with a 4400 plus Athlon X2, OCZ Gold Memory, ASUS yes. A8N SLI premium that's that's the model uh antec slk 26 we've, we found a brand new slk 2600 uh so it's basically the antec land boy but steel instead of aluminum brand new it was brand new like the manual inside Who's, was yellowed with age but it was stored that it was sealed <laughs> brand new in box um cool. yeah some ancient seasonic 520 watt power supply it was it was awesome it was fun anyway one of the games we played as we were building the machine the machine was you know how much do you think this thing cost back in 2005 okay i guessed so far over on the graphics card because i had forgotten that an 8800 gt was only like a couple hundred bucks it was yep. like 250 dollars now 250 dollars buys you and, and remember that was canadian Canadian, two hundred and fifty dollars buys you the entry levelist GTX card. Now that was one step under the top. I remember the the concept. I, I remember like laying out. There, there was a period of time where like a lot of my friends were getting computer upgrades. Yeah, and like a lot of people that I knew were were actively building computers. It was it was very it was it was pretty crazy. I think we were all like transitioning out of high school and getting real jobs. And we're like, right. wait, money? I'm going to spend it all right away. Yeah. Um, Good strat. But, Good strat. But like, I remember 300 bucks on a graphics card was like, if you can, if you can afford what a gamer. this point, like you're a mad lad. Yeah. Like your machine's going to be insane. You're a gamer like, boy. Just, oh my, you're going to run everything on like great settings. It's going to last you for at least three years at like fairly high performance, blah, 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 blah. Um, that's just so intensely not true now. Now and people don't make more money. It's <laughs> now three hundred and fifteen dollars is gonna buy you. Oh, that's even that's an auction too. That's not even. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's find a ten eighty. Let's find a ten eighty. Oh, this auction. 
Where's a buy it now for a 1080? Come on. 315. Here you go. $315 is going to buy you a 1080 from and the oh, remember too, the 1080 and the 1080 Ti did not launch at the same time. Uh, no, launch, that's the 2016 card. GTX, hold on a second. May 6th, 2016. <laughs> four over four years ago, like step down card. That's what you get for your 300 to 350 dollars. How much do we look? Look, look, I know, I know Intel also takes a lot of flack for their anti competitive behavior that they've, you know, engaged in over the years and all that, and, and etc. How hard do we need Intel to come in and compete with Nvidia here? So, so badly, so, so badly. So I've, badly. I've been waiting for this. I've been excited for this. Is there any rumors about that? That's that's the type of like tech rumor that I want is when are they stepping into the space? I've seen some really um, downer rumors about that. I've seen some yes. that they're that it's not going well and stuff like that. So yeah. that's I don't all know. I've really heard too, it's all, it's all is, rumors. Oh, great. It's all rumors. Raja Kaderi is still there. So presumably they're still working on something. I just hope it's not another like, yeah, it's a data center thing and you could game on it, I guess, if you really wanted to. <laughs> I, I hope it's, I hope yeah. within a couple of years they actually have a real gaming graphics card. I, you know, I, I hope our DNA too is amazing. That too. I hope Dr. Sue manages yes. to now that, now that she's come in and fix the cpu side of the side of the business i hope she takes a little little train ride down to gpu town and and kicks their caboose a little bit and gets that team going here because it's been so long since amd has even been in the conversation for a high-end graphics card like even that one that they did release a little while i don't even remember what it's called what was that what was that stupid card that was available for like a few months while they burned through some presumably excess inventory of data center GPUs or something and then it just like kind of went away. What, what 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 was that card even called? I don't remember. Not not it was after Fury. Uh man, I don't even remember. Chat, come on, help me out here, guys. Help me out. What was that? What was that thing? We like covered it at CES and stuff. And I was like, oh, yay. This is, this is real competition. No, not the 5700. That's like mid tier stuff. What, what was the high end one? Nobody. Re Radeon 7. Radeon 7. That was the one. Can you even buy a Radeon 7? Uh, while you figure that out, yeah. by the way, uh, Jaden reminded me to to bring this up. Uh, while we were struggling with, with Apple uh, to, to do some things that didn't make him want to pull all of his hair out at once, uh, Jaden started work on the much requested dark mode. Uh, oh. If you are interested in trying it, it is on the beta, uh, the beta track on the Android Play Store. Sweet. Obviously, we've been having issues on the Apple side, so there's nothing there. Uh, but on the Android Play Store, if you want, you can opt for the beta. Uh, it is a test version. It is a prototype version. Some things are not color shifted yet. The colors are still being tweaked stylistically. It's not the final version. Be All very right. aware. That's why it's called a beta. Uh, but if you want to check it out, you can check it out. Go check it out. Uh, so hold on. Over on Floatplane. Uh, hold on. Where, where'd that chat? Where'd that... Conan Kudo says Radeon 7 is available on sale. Well, it sure isn't on Newegg. And as far as I'm concerned, if it's not on Newegg, it doesn't exist. Like there might be a handful of them out there or something, but yeah, if it's not here, it's not real. 5700 XT is the cream of the crop. Wow, why does this only have three eggs? What's what could be? How could Azrock screw this up that badly? Oh, it must have just been early ones or something. Does Best Buy have them? Oh come on! I think Best Best Buy Radeon Seven, five hundred and fifty dollars. Maybe sold those out. are just maybe. sold out. I think it's an old listing. Okay. I was going to say, maybe those are just still on the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> Cause like, I remember back in the day, you would find really old stuff listed on Best Buy. Sometimes get that retro, get that retro tech, you know, to yesterday's tech, tomorrow's price kind of, kind of yeah. thing. Apparently they're doing a lot better in terms of online computer hardware sales these days though. Uh, I was talking to a Good. buddy of mine who works for Corsair and he was like, yeah, those Best Buy guys, like, don't take my word for it. Go do your own digging because, you know, whatever. But uh, 
they have been stepping up their game. And actually, if you go Good. and look at computer components on the site, there's way more variety and there's like a ton of reviews for stuff like the Asus yeah. uh, Tough Gaming X570 Plus. Remember, that's a relatively new board. That's a new platform. Has 335 customer reviews on Best Buy. They must be moving a freaking ton of computer components. The, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2070 Super, I believe this is uh, the like standard one, has 449 reviews. That Radeon 7 even had 22 reviews. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> But yeah, I, I, uh, differentiation in the online sales space is very good. Uh, Mr. Could purchase like half the planet Bezos. Uh, so yeah, I'm yeah. happy that I'm happy Best Buy is doing well. Yeah, honestly, I'm happy Best Buy is getting their crap together too. It's a, it's a good thing. Um, all right. Why don't we jump into our sponsors here? First up, we got private internet access. What's in your online security toolkit? Adding a VPN. Private internet access. Yeah, me too. Adding a VPN <laughs> lets you mask your IP and encrypt traffic to and from your devices. And PIA has reliable service with thousands of servers in dozens of countries and now features WireGuard. They've got no bandwidth caps and you can try it risk-free with their 30-day money-back guarantee. Connect up to 10 clients at once with a single account with clients for Windows, Mac OS, Android, iOS, and Linux. So why wait? Check it out at lmg.gg slash PIAWAN. The show is also brought to you by Honey. Just get it. Just, it takes like five seconds, okay? Just Go in your browser, extension manager, search for Honey, just add it. It saves you money, it costs you nothing. Do I really have to tell you more than that? Yes, I do, because I'm supposed to read the talking points that are in here, but just, just get it. Tune me out for the next 15 seconds, install Honey, you'll thank yourself. Uh, Honey works on over 30,000 stores, including Amazon, eBay, Newegg, Razor, Best Buy, Walmart, and more, and gets you the best promo codes whenever you shop online at supported sites. It's free to install, installs in just two clicks and honey gets a commission from the sites where you're shopping not from you that's why it's free so get honey at joinhoney.com slash linus and start saving today finally the show is brought to you by display display is it's simple it's a magnetic mounted metal print and it sticks on your wall and looks awesome they've got over they've got like they're getting close to a million different arts like spanning every conceivable style. They're durable. You don't need any power tools to hang them. And there's no holes in your wall thanks to their magnetic mounting. They plant a tree for every displate purchased. And we even have our own line of displates at displate.com slash Linus Tech Tips. So why wait? Save 15% on a displate at lmg.gg slash displate when. Here, I'm just going to take a moment to show you guys our designs. Oh, we've got more! Oh, cool. Oh, this is really cool. Okay, hold on a second here. Um, so we've got uh, designs from the shirts, which I think are awesome. Check that out. Apparently, we've got some of our old posters and stuff, too. Linus Tech Tips poster, Tech Wiki poster. Uh, oh, man, that RAM one looks really good as a display. It really does, actually. The, <laughs> honestly, bringing the, the shirts onto displays was that makes a lot of sense because those designs are very universal they don't have to be on a shirt and check this out actually this is one that i was not aware that we had put on what's that what the heck what's the why, why are there what the why, what are these landscapes why do why do we have landscapes here guess where these are from i i don't see the updated stream yet so I oh can't. okay well they're beautiful why don't i why don't i say that much they're they're absolutely beautiful can you oh. get, can you guess where we would get? Is that Brandon? Yeah. So these are uh, some of Brandon's photography. So you guys can check it out. That's super cool. Yeah, I recognize at least some of these from our workcation to Banff. So that's. Yeah. I mean, no offense to the the more branded stuff, but that that's probably the the ones that I would. I would go for. That's those like, are amazing photos. Not not to like toot Brandon's horn, but those are those are. As far as my untrained eye can tell, those are like world class photos. Well, that's a time. that's a that's the low key, you know, fan move, right? You get that the, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't need Especially the Linus Tech you... Tips logo on your wall necessarily. Maybe that's not your style. Yeah. Like you, you might live with yeah. a relationship partner that is not necessarily as <laughs> yeah. inclined into Linus Tech Tips as you are. Yeah, but you could go this route 
they, they look stunning. They don't put holes in walls and they're not pushing like a, a, a specific brand. So they might be more accepting of it. It's cool. Heck yeah. yeah. So go check it out. Uh, all right. What do we want to jump into next? Man, we've only made it through like two topics. We got <laughs> to do the Corsair topics. IPO. We got to do yeah. the Corsair IPO. So uh, The Verge reported on this. Um, so hopefully you guys have a Phillips head screwdriver. Um, so you can make your way through this article here. You know, fun. F okay. The, sorry. The, uh, sorry. Uh, what was it? I'm going off topic. Live strong, uh, anti-static strap. Yes. So, yeah. okay. I, uh, it showed up in my recommended the other day and I have a confession for you. I had never actually watched the full build really? guide. Yeah. It's. Yeah. I, I assumed, I assumed at the time I had watched, uh, Kyle's reaction to it. Um, but not the entire thing. I think I watched like half of it. Cause that was a very busy time in my life. Nothing against Kyle. It's a great video. I've actually since watched the whole thing through. Um, but at the time, the reason that I didn't do like a Linus reacts to video was because I just was too busy to like go watch it thinking that it couldn't be that bad and there probably wasn't going to be a video in there anyway so i'm not going to bother it really is that bad the yeah. worst part though and there's a lot of people that are there's a lot of people still harassing the guy that made it which is honestly That's, the jokes the jokes over at this yeah. point um but Maybe. there's also how terribly it was handled like he still hasn't acknowledged that he did anything wrong. And it's like, yeah. really? Like, yeah, I he, suspect he, he that got would... very defensive over the whole thing. You should still leave him alone. Yes. Because, like, there's no real good reason to, especially, continue harassment on anybody, especially these days. But, um, it, yeah, his response to it was not great. I, I remember, like, watching a, a stream that he was, I think he was playing some game. I don't remember what it was. Uh, and he was talking about it and, and he mentioned like, well, it turned on and I'm like, oh. It turned on because you made a lot of changes from the actual build guide portion. <laughs> and like, like you can turn a computer on in a lot of not very good states. I've done it. <laughs> like, yeah. I've turned a computer on with, uh, Linus showed me this one, with my palm pressed against the CPU <laughs> to heat sink it temporarily while I check something. There's really like getting it to turn on is not like <laughs> yeah, not a super impressive feat. It, it's it's very basic Lego. Um, yeah, yeah. But like the thing is, like all you have to do to make a scandal like that go away is say, you know, hey, my bad. Let me fix it. That's all you have to say. Yeah, but that, some that people very can't do it. Thing. He could have. I I can because kyle's a very stand-up guy I like i like kyle a lot i almost guarantee you if he reached out to kyle they could have done like a really cool collab not even that. almost i will i will put my personal linus sebastian seal of guarantee on that there is no way that anyone i know in the pc tech space on youtube wouldn't have absolutely helped them out to do it for on a do-over just you know what why don't we just call that a mulligan? mulligan? I don't yeah. even need your Capital One or Capital Direct or whoever sponsored it. I don't even need a chunk of your sponsorship. Let me just come in, in here and let's get this fixed. I reached out. I offered. Like, even though I hadn't even watched the yeah. video. Maybe that yeah. was maybe that was part of why I offered. I don't know. I don't know what was in my head at the time, but I was just like, oh, yeah, sure. I don't know, whatever. Like, I, I thought, like, can't be that bad, but, like, if, if he needs help, if he needs some pointers or whatever, hey, I got tech tips. <laughs> Yeah, like, it, and they could have honestly completely removed the bad press and gotten that Capital One sponsorship a lot more traction than it originally had. Because I yep. guarantee you that follow up video where they're just, they, they have humility and they laugh it off and they move forward and they make a great video out of it, that would have been huge. Oh, yeah, for sure. That would for have sure. Been massive. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, why don't we uh, why don't we move on to the next topic here? So Corsair wants you to buy them. 
All right, so the original article here is from The Verge, and I have actually read through a fair amount of the uh, Form S1 filing as well because I was really, really curious about this. Um, it's long. Like, to be clear, I have not read this cover to cover. It is many, many, many pages of, you know, everything that's good about Corsair and the structure of Corsair and the balance sheets of Corsair and the one of the things that I was and like you know how well they think they're positioned and what their potential for growth is and what challenges could be so as you alluded to earlier on in the show uh, they did acknowledge that uh, one of the reasons that they were profitable for the first six months of this year was actually due to the global pandemic and a lot of people becoming suddenly interested in upgrading their computers so they actually made a loss in Every previous year that they reported here, you can tell from the bracket, oh no, not uh, August 24th, 2017 to December 31st, 2017. Apparently that was a money-making period for them. But they actually made a loss in the previous three reported periods, 2018, 2019, and 2019, six months into June, oh, beginning of 2019. Um, but then 2020, for the first six months, they made a profit, which they attributed in no small part to the uh, COVID uh, lockdown. Uh, anyway, one of the things that like look, it's just it goes on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever it's and ever. Like fun. what even? Like what even? What, what's this? What's this gamer pyramid? Hold on a second. I'm and gonna... like, not not only are are they they doing well because they have like cases and cooling products and power supplies and storage drives and keyboards and mice and all that kind of stuff that we've known them for for a long time. But very recently, they had acquisitions like Linus, I think, just said with Elgato and Scuff Gaming and yep. origin pc yep uh and like that's the amount of people that are moving into i think twitch streaming was already really making a rise for uh pc purchases and pc players again uh yep. after it had been falling for a long time and then now that people are stuck inside teachers are are t teaching from home if, if they don't want to cause disasters and and all of these other things people are getting into streaming not just for twitch now they're getting into streaming for meetings for conferences for for teaching situations for for so many other reasons and elgato like matured at like exactly the right time oh yeah for sure their, their, their product stack their their the 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 packaging the marketing like everything just finally got to the point where it's like this is very professional and there's a set of products here that can solve pretty much all of my streaming problems and they all work together nicely yep. all that kind of stuff they hit that point and covid showed up like yep. right away they were ready crazy it, like there's there's people in my life that i wouldn't expect to know almost any computer hardware name that are like very interested in elgato it's it's a wild experience um, so, oh, just a quick side note for those of you, I, I've been asked before, like if I would take Linus Media Group Inc. public and, you know, when I say no, invariably, uh, I've been asked why that document alone <laughs> is all the reason that I need to not do that because creating that document looks like the worst thing ever. And yes, a lot of it could be created by, you know, the lawyers who would be involved in a process like that. But a lot of that really looks like it has to be handcrafted by the executives that are laying out sort of their plan for the next, you know, one, two, five, ten years and like making this case for why. Uh, in this case, Corsair is trying to raise a hundred million dollars cash um, in return for some, a sale of some portion of the company. I don't actually know how much um, they're how much they're valuing themselves at based on that they're doing a billion dollars revenue a year right now like what Corsair also has a billion dollars worth of memory and power supplies and stuff uh, I would say they probably think they're worth a lot but um, and streaming hardware yeah not Elgato stuff, stuff has been sold out like the whole year basically basically anyway the biggest reason that I was digging into this was just my own personal idle curiosity uh, because I wanted to know how much they spent on Origin PC. Ever since they announced the acquisition of Origin PC, I've been like... Yeah. But why? Like why? Why would you even yeah, do that? You're Corsair. 
why are you buying Origin PC? It's like Logitech being like, yeah, we acquired Final Mouse. Like, nothing against Final Mouse. But Final <clears throat> Mouse is not relevant compared to Logitech in the peripheral space. You know what I mean? Like, it's kind of like, it's it's like... Uh, they've, got, they've got some, they did the Ninja Mouse. It, it, like, I, I, I agree with you and you're right, but they're they're probably a little bit more relevant than you think. Uh, yeah, they're not Logitech. No, and I think they lost yes. a lot of traction after the Ninja Mouse. So, so basically, you know, we're we're looking. So, Corsair had already built out their own infrastructure around their Vengeance gaming PCs, which are fine. And then, as soon as the Origin acquisition happened, I mean, obviously this was going to happen, but over time, uh, you know, there's more and more Corsair products in Origin PCs obviously so what's the difference at a certain point what is the difference between corsair just doing vengeance pcs with exclusive case designs from time to time and an origin pc and yes i get it the origin team is like still working on origin pc but over time as we've seen whether it's twitch or oculus the acquiring company eventually takes over in terms of culture and i would be very surprised to see anything uh, other than that happened not to mention that the pc assembly business because i'm not going to i'm not going to um call it anything you know higher than that the pc assembly business is not a profitable one main gear actually tried to raise money uh let's see main gear uh financial statements here we go main gear tries to tried to raise money back in the mid to mid 2010s and they released uh, some financial statements for their 2016 and 2015 years. I don't think any of this was ever audited, but like, quite frankly, it's not impressive enough that I would think that they're lying. Um, here we go. Here we go. So in 2015 on, what is it? Like, what's a main gear computer cost? Like somewhere between a thousand and like, you know, five thousand, six thousand dollars, something like that. So they've moved anywhere from you know, 6,000 computers to like, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm, I'm doing some, I'm doing some bad, bad math here. So six, let's, so let's, let's say seven, seven million dollars. Okay. Seven million dollars revenue across the two years, about 14 between the two years. So divided by, I don't know, let's say an average sell price of $1,500. So they moved like 4,500 boxes basically. Uh, that is a lot of work. That's that's a lot of work to do in a year. 40, 4,500 computers here. Or, yeah, 4,500 4, computers divided by 365. Assuming they're working seven days a week, they're building 12 computers a day. They are, they're, they're building machines. For a grand total of, in 2015, $39,000 in profit. And in 2016, $310,000 in profit. And you might look at that and go, wow, Linus, you know, what kind of monster are you? Three hundred thousand dollars—a lot of money to make in a year—and it is from like an individual standpoint. They're so, also a really old company, though, aren't they? Main Gear. Uh oh, Main Gear. Yeah, I'm looking at Main uh, Gear now. I, but yes, Main Gear's been around a long time. I think uh, X Alienware after the acquisition. Can't remember. Uh, don't quote me on that. Anyway, uh, the point is uh, for for personal for like personal earnings. Yes. $300,000 a year, it's a lot of money. For a business that needs to reinvest in itself, $300,000 is like I think At least they did probably. And to be clear, I, I actually, I like the guys over at Main Gear. Good I guys. They do good stuff. Good guys. Yes. But it's a, it's a very rough business to be in. It's like they didn't, tough. <laughs> we didn't choose an easy line of work with Floatplane, and they didn't choose an easy line of work with, with Main Gear. No, so that's, that is 4% net profit that's terrifying as a as a business owner and the craziest part is digging around in here like i'm not finding the you know way that they're going to double that like i don't i don't see it it's just that computer hardware is just expensive you know like that that that's kind of all there is to it it, it just costs a lot um so that's that's uh Anyway, so that's what led me to believe that, like, the Origin acquisition must have been cheap or something. Finally, back to the Corsair IPO documents. 
So I found out, I dug in there, I found out, apparently it was $13.8 million for Origin PC and 2 million of it was in uh, Corsair stock, is my understanding. I'm not a lawyer, I'm not an expert when it comes to reading these sorts of documents. Um, but I found that absolutely fascinating. I kind of think maybe I should have should have started a PC building business a little while ago so that I could flip it for apparently $14 million to Corsair. There is no way, there's no way on this green earth that I would pay $14 million for Origin PC. No offense. Love the guys over at Origin PC. Good folks. Good people. There's no way. That business was worth $14 million. No offense to Corsair. Y'all got fleeced real hard, I think. Just my just my personal opinion. Personal opinion. Yeah. JMO. Yeah. And I, and I could understand it again uh, from like a things we do expansion standpoint. But they already um, built they PCs. Already did it. Yeah. They like literally already figured it out on their own. Um, and I think they did a decent job of it too. So yeah, pretty weird. I don't know. I don't know, man. Anyway, um, in the SEC filing, it was noted that the global demand for PC gaming and streaming gear reached 36 billion in 2019. That's another thing is Corsair. One of the things in the document here actually was Corsair's position in a variety of different or like their, their, um, like their market share position in a variety of different categories that they participate in. Yeah, check this out. Uh, so that's one of the other concerns I have. 36 billion for PC gaming and streaming gear. Corsair's already selling a billion dollars a year and they are already number one in keyboards, high performance memory, computer cases, power supplies, and cooling. Number two in streaming gear and performance controllers. Number three in mice and number four in gaming headsets. So one of the reasons that you invest in a company is if you think it's going to pay a strong dividend or, well, the, the two reasons you invest in a company are if you think it's going to pay strong dividends on an ongoing basis because it's got like a good foundation to their business model. Or number two, if you think the stock's going to go full stonks mode to the moon and you're going to be able to cash out of your investment in the company. So based on that Corsair is looking at a total addressable market of 36 billion, they already sell a billion dollars a year. They already are at the top of like most of the categories that they participate in. And what is even left for Corsair to expand into? They're not going to they're not going to acquire the expertise to start making motherboards anytime soon or CPUs. So like Corsair, they already make chairs. I was just like, Corsair chairs? Nope, they already do that. Corsair, like, hair product? Like, what? Where they are they going from here? Cards. Same thing, same thing. Unless they want to, like, I mean, I don't know. Maybe they raise $100 million and they're like, yeah, we're going to build, like, an SMD, like, fa like, manufacturing facility or something. Like, maybe, I don't know, but why like that's another business that is just horrendous yeah. there are two companies that make money selling graphics cards yeah nvidia well and nvidia i was gonna say there's basically one <laughs> like if you're an evga even if you're like a golden boy valued partner of someone like an nvidia i would be floored if you're making more than single digit gross <laughs> margins on a graphics cards. That's why companies like EVGA were so desperate to get into power supplies, mice, keyboards. I mean, sound cards. That's how desperate EVGA is. They're making sound cards now. Like who even uh, has a sound card anymore? No people one. People in Twitch chat are coming up with different ideas like coarse hair. Coarse hair. And coarse uh. air. So DigiDude says right. over on Floatplane, Corsair did hybrid coolers for GPUs with MSI, right? Sort of. Corsair leveraged their partnership with Asetech and their fan designs to do a hybrid cooler in really partnership cool. with MSI. Corsair didn't design a graphics card at all. Or, or a cooler, yeah. Um, DigiDude says maybe Corsair should try and merge with MSI. There is no way. I would be, mm. I'd be shocked. Also, MSI is a pretty big company. I don't know if you realize this, but a lot of the brand names that you know, like Asus, MSI, Gigabyte, they do a ton of work not under their own brand names. They are huge companies. 
I'm actually kind of curious what MSI's annual revenue is. So uh, MSI in, uh, wait, hold on a second. Oh, Motorola Solutions. No, MicroStar Technology. I want this one. Uh, MSI's annual revenue, according to Owler, anyway, is $4 billion. Um, and remember, MSI is an actual manufacturer. The margins in manufacturing, especially when you also own your own brand name, like when you are vertically integrated like that, are much better than if you are rebranding like engineer i'm not saying corsair doesn't engineer they engineer but they are they are putting their brand name on what someone else is actually producing in their own factory corsair to my knowledge does not own any factories now that may be not the case when it comes to things like dram assembly but they don't own a dram fab like they do not produce dram chips they would assemble modules um, so they're they're basically in every case integrating what someone else farther up the chain is actually building, uh, and MSI. I guess you could say that about MSI as well, but they're just kind of one layer higher than Corsair, um, and not in every business. I mean, MSI has to buy power supplies from someone, so it's uh, I guess very um, it's 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 a real mix where MSI's revenues come from, whereas Corsair is almost entirely consumer facing, as far as I know. And I would have to go into this report in more detail in order to be able to say that definitively, but I'm pretty sure that that's the case. Um, MSI has a lot of patents. They do buy stuff for multiple motherboards. Yeah, abs absolutely. MSI is, MSI is a big company. Did they say in the filing what the 100 million is for? Probably, but it was like a 200 page document and I didn't, I didn't read it all. It was mostly just in there to satisfy my own curiosity about stuff. Um, so... I'm not going to hold you to this forever. I'm not going to bring up this WAN show in, you know, three years and be like, da, da, da. Luke, would oh, you buy, no. would you buy Corsair? Uh, I'm not good at this stuff. Um, I think, so I'm not going to give you a direct answer right away. Give me a moment. I think, I think if you think that, especially in North America, because I'm assuming that's where Corsair is most popular, um, I think if you think that COVID is going to keep dragging on for a significant period of time, I do, I would, I would definitely be interested in moving into it because I do think a lot of this is very tightly tied to people being stuck at home. I do think they're going to continue to do pretty well. I think working from home is like, like that's going to be a trend is, for this sure. This has forced change yep. for a lot of different people around the globe. Yep. Working from home is definitely going to be a trend. There's going to be offices that are like, huh, it's kind of nice to not pay for an office. 100%. And we can just, or, or not pay for as much office. Maybe they have a certain amount of people uh, still working in office, but they have uh, uh, potentially more outside or they have like uh, half shift things where you come in for like half the week and the other guy comes in for half a week and you share an area something. I don't know. A lot of that kind of stuff is going to be happening though. Industrial space, company space, stuff like that in cities, wicked expensive. Oh yeah. If you can pay for less of it, you're going to be saving a lot of money as a company. Did you hear Schools... about that company in California? Sorry to cut you off, but it totally no, ties into it. your point here. They ditched their headquarters, just sent everyone home. And I think they're, they're doing like three or four, all hands conferences a year. That's the plan. You know, obviously they're not doing that right now and still saving money. So it's yeah. like, that's, that's pretty sick. Actually, you still get that face-to-face yeah. -face interaction with your colleagues, but you can work from home. Heck yeah. And they were like still ahead on the deal or something stupid like that. I, I've, I've, I know you and I haven't really talked about it, but it's, it's been something I've legitimately been thinking about for flow plane. Um, and and I actually hadn't th heard of that, and I really like that idea because yeah. the one thing that I've been hitching on this whole time is there is as cheesy as as it is, yep. team building is actually really important. Hundred um, percent. And you do lose a lot of that having people not come in, uh, and like every float plane meetup that we've had has been really cool. And I yep. think as uh, as sometimes odd as they've been where we just like spend tons of time brainstorming ideas during the day and then just like play video games and board games at night, whatever. Like they're not as traditional company retreaty as some company retreats may be. Who would expect uh, we, them to be? <laughs> yeah, we like went to LTX and stuff, but like I think they've been really cool. And I've it's it's been really cool for me to like genuinely really enjoy spending time 
with the people that I work with in person where like we don't really get to spend that much time together because we largely work separately and yeah. we work at home. Uh, and not being able to have that meet up, meet up because of COVID has really sucked. But doing them, like if we did them quarterly, something like that, that could be really cool. Yeah, I think that would I be- I think that'd be really cool. Especially because Creator Warehouse is hiring so much and so fast, that might just be the best plan. I don't know I if know. we're gonna have a space for you anyway. I've been I've been a little worried about that. Um, <laughs> Nick wants like, to hire like four or five more people in like oh the next few months. Wow. Um, uh, <laughs> and yeah, I was and like, like and it, it it is I don't know faster internet connections. There there. Hey, being able to expense your internet. Yeah, that's a good thing. That's we would probably have to shift yep. to stuff like that, supporting yep. people's purchasing of of like ergonomic things for their home and, yep. and internet connections and stuff like that. And that's fine. Fully um, support that by the way. So no, no problem. No, yeah, I love how yeah. we're having like a biz dev discussion just live on WAN. I know, right? <laughs> uh, there's been some questions about this from float plane people. Um, like what our approach there is going to be. And I just haven't really known. So I guess here's your partial answer. I'm sure we'll continue to discuss. Yeah, stop stalling. It. Stop stalling, yeah. Luke. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Jumping back to Corsair. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't really like messing around with stock stuff. So like personally, such a cop out. What a cop out. Personally, cop probably. Out. I mean, well, cause the, the problem is, is I could rectify this question. Like right when this IPO goes public. So if you were like, would you buy it? I would have to actually buy it if I said yes, or else I'd just be a, a liar. Okay. And I'm not going to buy it. So no. All right. That's fair. That's fair. How about <laughs> hypothetical Luke that does invest in stocks then? More more actively. Sure. Um, maybe. I, I think uh, I would be worried about the hype around it because I think a yeah. lot of people are going to look at it and go like, oh, computer stuff that has like a lot of streaming things built into it around COVID. Let's go in. I think there's going to be a lot of that reaction. So I think I would hold back from the initial because I don't really fully know how like buying right on an IPO works. If you're able to get at their launch price and then sell within like almost 24 hours. So would you would go that. short. Uh, this is great. XX random Delta XX on Twitch. Hypothetical Luke that buys things. <laughs> Nailed it. Absolutely. <laughs> you just nailed it. Comment of the year right there. We don't even need the rest of this year. That was it. A hypothetical loop that spends money. That is truly hypothetical, says Janelle Taylor. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Um, all right. Yeah. Some people are but wondering. Yeah, I, I, guess, I guess I would go short. And that's not because I don't think it, they're a good company or anything like that. I just think the hype around it and the the like, I know things that COVID's going on. I'm going to big brain this. I, I think there's going to be yeah. a lot of that and it's going to temporarily boost it. That's fair. Um We've got a couple other float plane comments here. Uh, hold on, what's this? Remember th three three ng brock Remember when LTT used to be a tech channel and not a clothing brand? Okay, we are still a tech channel. I've actually got an upcoming video that I'm gonna tease real quick here. We are doing how does LMG make money V two. Cool. And it's going to nice. include the merch business in it. And if these numbers are accurate, which they don't actually look right to me, so I was gonna. I was going to ask some questions about them, but if these numbers are accurate and my Google Sheets will ever load, then I was going to give you guys a teaser here for how much of our revenue actually comes from merch. Uh, and it's, wow, it's really taking a very, very long time to load. How about, how about, how about we download the Excel? What do you think? What do you think of that? Yeah. You like that? And you like, what do you think of that? Okay. There we go. Uh, so that's done but it's not open in Excel yet because it's being stupid and slow. Come on. Come on. I got a live show to run here. And then there was uh, another one. Uh, Rod. Rod's uh, posting in the float plane chat. There's people who are wondering what Creator Warehouse is. Creator Warehouse is the merch team. Um, and okay, here we go. So merch is clothing and other 16%. And I don't know if that's revenue or profit right now. I can tell you that if it's revenue, it's um, that number is like higher sounding than um, like it's less impressive than it sounds because profit on merch compared to revenue is much lower 
than when you're selling like views, you know, like influence. Um, well, sort of, because you also have a lot of overhead that goes along with making videos, I guess. So it's just how you do the math. Um, yeah, so there's a labor cost to making videos, but then there's also a labor cost and a materials cost to making merch, which is one of the reasons that I actually shied away from getting into physical merch for so long, even though, you know, everyone in their dog, like, you know, merch, uh, companies like Teespring and whatever were like, yeah, you guys should like get hardcore into merch because you can make so much money. I was like, ah, it just doesn't seem like a great business. You got all this inventory and all this liability. Like, eh, I don't know. Uh, it's been, it's been pretty good. It's been pretty good for us. So should I check the straw poll first or should I give my answer first? Uh, I, 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 I think made a straw you should poll. answer first. You should make I me think... answer. Absolutely yeah. not. Absolutely not. Would you do what I said? Nope. No. I don't even think there's going to be a lot of hype around it. I think that the PC enthusiast community thinks it's really big. In the grand scheme of things, it's not very big. And what moves like major amounts of money on the NASDAQ is Public, right? mainstream, yeah. mainstream appeal, mainstream acceptance. Like I was listening to Jim Cramer talk about AMD and it was just, it was clear that He's informed about them from like a business standpoint, but he he seemed to think that like a seven nanometer chip was somehow like um like like if you had the seven nanometer, you like had the key to success. When actually it's not that simple. Um you could have a bad seven nanometer chip. Um you could have a good, you know, 10 nanometer chip, you could have a bad 14 nanometer chip, you could have a lot of lot of bad 14 nanometer chips it's all like it's like he didn't really understand like the technology he didn't really understand what he was talking about um with respect to that even though like his advice overall like his analysis was actually i thought very good um this was an article a little while ago so don't don't be running and looking at it and like making a decision based on it. its old news at this point but um it was sort of a, a reflection uh moment for me because i was listening to that going like yeah that's how like an average investor, not even an average investor, that's how an educated investor is looking at these companies. And I think if that's the amount of understanding that someone like a Jim Cramer has of, you know, process node technology and the importance to a company like AMD or Intel, like imagining the average investor um, looking at Corsair's portfolio and thinking that keyboards with colorful lights on them are going to be the next like, Apple Inc., uh, yeah, I, I doubt it. I doubt there's going to be that kind of like rabid fanboyism around them. And I doubt there's going to be that kind of momentum where you could just buy it and flip it a couple days later for a big profit. You know, it'd be really interesting. Um, and I would love for someone else to do this because as the, the, the quote of the year said, I'm clearly not the one to do it. Um, but an investment bot that was given some, I, whatever, I don't know, some amount of money that acted based on Google Trends data. Ooh, interesting. So it, it crawled Google Trends data and tried to make investment predictions based on that. Interesting. Okay, so Corsair, interest over time since uh, Q4 2019 or late Q3 has gone up a bit but it's down off its peak in April of this year. So there and you honestly, go. Honestly, that might kind of make sense. Oh, wait. Well, all related topics, Lincoln, MKX, SUV. Oop, derp, derp. Uh, okay, why don't we try Corsair memory? Well, and like, uh, uh, I, yeah. I think... We can try Elgato, have, Elgato, Elgato, Elgato. All right. I was going to say, I think, I think you'd have to feed it a fair amount because it would have to know like what things really related to it. Okay, so Elgato peaked in March and April, Actually, March, April of this year, May. I don't know if you'd want to feed it because wasn't wasn't like Zoom, didn't everyone like invest in the wrong Zoom or something? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I, re I remember something happened with that. Um Wrong Zoom. That auto completed in Google for me. The SEC really wants investors to stop buying the wrong Zoom stock. Oh lordy! So well, like that's unfortunate. Maybe, maybe it doesn't matter. Like the I, like I was saying, like uh, you should make sure that 
uh, the the crawler knows to look for things like Elgato, even though they're a, they're a part of Corsair. Maybe not, because it doesn't actually matter. Like the reality doesn't really matter. It's public perception, right? Oh, this is terrible. So Zoom video, when everyone was into Zoom video communications, a bunch of people accidentally invested in Zoom technologies who spiked way up. And then up. unfortunately, it's a defunct company based in China that previously distributed wireless communication products, no longer operates and does not generate revenue. Lordy. <clears throat> oh, And the okay. actual Zoom, which like probably should have received that spike like got a i mean it got a nice bump but yeah not what you'd expect for the amount of like how do you publicity buy, and stuff that was happening around how do time. you buy the wrong stock lordy all right well but anyway. this is what i'm talking about so like may, maybe the crawler shouldn't even be that smart because it has to like <laughs> the truly average investor yeah <laughs> so like maybe you shouldn't actually make it that good and it should just go off like very basic uh google trends data Okay, well, I think you're overestimating the importance of Elgato. It's a very small, small portion of no, Corsair's I, I, overall I was, business. No, I was just talking generally because a lot of like stocks, awareness, what, yeah, right. Yeah. A lot of celebrities so are like getting into streaming all of a sudden, so they'd have this awareness. So that's something. All right, that's fair. That's fair. All right, that's fair. But yeah, I don't. I don't know. I I'm not into this kind of stuff. I, I find some of the like I, I would find it very interesting to see read reports and potentially watch videos yeah. about like that that's example that i gave the I, uh the crawler bot <laughs> making investments but i'm not that interested in it personally I yeah think. i'd follow the news i i'd love to be proven wrong like i i love For the sure. guys over at corsair um yeah. top to bottom good people but i just i don't know i i i don't i, I again again remember too though that this is through the filter of someone who does not buy and does not own any stocks whatsoever i own nothing no crypto no stocks no bonds nothing um all right so let's go ahead results okay 56 percent would buy corsair stock out of our audience here now so this is where this is where like i guarantee you those numbers are wrong yeah that's fair uh sorry give me give me, oh shoot give me one second stall stall start a topic uh okay uh let me see what we've got on the dock that we haven't already talked about uh, apple may be preparing its own search engine uh for the past forever google has been paying apple billions of dollars just for the company to keep google as the default search engine for every apple product that was a thing that happened with uh many different companies it wasn't just uh Google to Apple, it was Google to quite a few other groups. In July, a UK competition and markets authority took a shot at the deal, claiming that the companies imposed a barrier on market competition in the search engine space. Uh, yeah. Uh, pressure from regulators, uh, pressure from regulators like this scenario that I just explained, as well as Apple's notorious desire for self-reliance, may be giving Apple ideas for launching its own search engine, which is very interesting. Uh, recent changes in Spotlight Search on iOS 14 and iPad OS 14 uh, are bypassing Google altogether, and new changes made Spotlight Search go directly to search results rather than going to Google. The Apple bot web crawler now renders pages in a similar way to Google and has been uh, updated to rank web pages just like a real search engine. All of this is designed to give Apple enough material so it could build something like a search engine, albeit one embedded in Apple products and not a classical web-based one. Although that's not exactly a difficult thing to pivot to. Um, it's pretty easy to make a website with a search bar on it. So if you have all the features and the back end there, you can, you can make that step in a pretty simple way. Uh, this also does come after there has been job postings from Apple for search engineers. Uh, so. Yeah, I think they're very clearly trending in that direction. We'll have to see if they actually make the, the full final step, but yeah. All right, and uh, Russian hacking plot targeted Tesla factory. Do you want to talk us through this one? I actually was not following this as it was developing. This looks crazy, though. I didn't follow it that closely, but it, it's it's kind of nuts. Um, 
it, there, there was a Russian speaking immigrant that came to America and has been working for Tesla. Um, and this guy, I believe his name is there. Uh, Ooh, I'm not going to pronounce that properly. Come on. You can try Khrushchev. Khrushchev. No, that sounds credible enough. All right. Uh, I have no clue, but hopefully that's at least somewhat close. Uh, said he was vacationing the U.S. and arranged for himself and the, uh, the, 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 the immigrant person working at Tesla uh, to meet. And he offered, I believe it was $500,000 initially uh, for this person to install malware on uh, Tesla's internal network that would feed information out to this Russian-based hacking group. Wow. Uh, the, the, apparently after the first meeting, the guy reported it to, I believe, Tesla and the FBI, and all subsequent meetings were monitored and recorded, et cetera. They were very on top of this, uh, including uh, the Tesla employee negotiating his cut up from 500000 to $1 million. That's crazy. So clearly, they were expecting some, this, some juice. Can, here. can you imagine this employee like negotiating for a better cut of a deal they know they're he's not going to get? get? I'm sure he's getting something um you got to get something yeah like I'm, I'm sure tesla or or the fbi or something is going to give him something. i mean what do you think that, tesla's that deal with him is like dollars. look we'll give you half of whatever you can negotiate make it convincing like i like how does that, that conversation would go amazing. <laughs> <laughs> i have no idea but that would be that would be amazing i would you love get that a car oprah style <laughs> um but yeah apparently he could face up to five years in prison i'm honestly surprised it's like kind of that low um it's 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 interesting apparently it, it almost got or it did sort of get put on pause because they had done a similar scheme to a different company that i don't believe is named and that was currently like in full swing so they weren't super interested in starting the the, the tesla project quite yet because they they were focused on working on this other one that again i don't think was named but seemed a little bit more successful so yeah that's that's pretty that's pretty crazy Wow. The uh the Tesla employee was Igor Igorovich? Yeah. Khrushchev. Yeah. Krush okay. Wow. Khrushchev, I think, is the, the, the guy that came over that tried to uh push the malware. Oh what sorry. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, you're right. That was just a bad positioning of a bullet point. All right, so I think that's everything we committed to talk through with you guys. Uh, thank you for tuning in. And uh, all that's left now is to get through some of these super chats. They're yeah. super. Uh, Veg says, I agree with Epic side of the argument, but the whole save Fortnite thing was a bit childish. Well, yeah, but look at the users they're trying to woo here. Yes. Literal yeah. children. Um, yeah. Anthony says, another view. It's a free market. Apple created their platform. Um, laws need to be updated for Epic to get anything done. Well, that's the thing. The laws do exist. Epic's just arguing that they are being violated right now. Hamza says, how do payments work on the iOS Floatplane app now? They don't. Uh, you have to pay through the website, and then you just sign in using the, using the app. And that's going to be very confusing, because that is definitely one of the rules, is uh, we aren't able to tell you why anything doesn't work. Yeah. But that's actually the same as Netflix and stuff. So I don't think and it's going to be that confusing to people. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully iOS users are getting used to it at this point. It's kind of how yeah. quite a few different services work. Who would win in a fight, asks that guy eating cake. You and me versus Paul and Kyle. I, I, am I going to sound too... I think we'd win. Like, Oh, 100%. Yeah, hundred percent. Not even close. No sorry, offense sorry, to Paul guys, and Kyle, but... but like, <laughs> get real. Yeah. <laughs> um. Oh man, I feel bad. Um. Yeah, I just... Sorry, I just. Yeah, I feel like I feel like Both a real monster. Guys. I wouldn't want to. I'll say that much. Um. But I still would. Yeah. All right. What else we got here? Da, 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 da. Aging airplanes. I'd have, I'd have some some uh, some some feeling behind my punches when I'm like, Paul, why are you still not on the float plane? Join the service. Yeah, Paul. It's really good. You can make more money. 
Aging Your users will even thank you. Oh yeah, I've got another. Uh, I've got another teaser for the upcoming. How does LMG make money? So six uh, percent from Floatplane. It's a big chunk. It's a big chunk. Makes a big difference. Massive shout out to the Floatplane peeps. Uh, da, da, da. You guys don't even really push it that much. No, no. Honestly, it's just the people that really want to support us. It's really appreciate it. Uh, what's uh, where'd it go? Do you have anything else to do? Why does this only have three eggs? Um, oh, yeah, Aging Airplanes asks Does AMD's OpenCL stand a chance against CUDA? Um, honestly, at this point, I don't really see how OpenCL does yeah. stand a chance against CUDA. NVIDIA has done a very good job, not just of introducing the technology, but supporting it with software developers. Um, we're an all NVIDIA shop when it comes to our workstations. Like there's just, there is no question. There's no option of going AMD from a, from a workstation standpoint. Literally the only workstations on earth that I'm aware of that actually unironically use AMD are Apple ones. And that's just because they are way too salty at NVIDIA. Um, not saying they're entirely unjustified, just to be clear. Uh, Aging Airplane says also, LTT's IPO would be a disaster. Uh, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it would, I, I wouldn't do it. It would suck. Man. <laughs> I'd be far more likely to consider like some kind of like private, private equity, like, like ownership with the community. The problem is that we'd have to do a lot of the same work as if we were just publicly listed. And I just, I can't be arsed. I like being able to make my own decisions. Yeah. I don't think you'd ever do it. Even if it wasn't even that difficult. Kinestic says, uh, any update on different colored shirt fabrics for LTT shirts? No, unfortunately. I think it's been every week for a bit now. Yeah, the bad news is that we got them in. They didn't meet the quality standards. So we're, we're going back to the drawing board a little bit. I, I have no idea when we're going to get there. All right. So that's it for the WAN show. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you again next week. Yeah. Same bad time, same bad channel. Bye. Oh, shoot. The bit. Should we raid someone? Is like planty time streaming or like uh, wifey sauce or like is anyone is anyone cool? I think streaming. I think planty time is actually having a nap. Oh, uh, planty time's having a little little sleep, little little rest there. Having, UFD Tech is live little... on YouTube doing a 24 hour charity stream. Oh, yeah, 75. $7,500 worth of giveaways. Ooh. Uh, All right. Let's see if... Sure. If he's on Twitch as well. If he's live on Twitch as well. Because that would be an easier place to raid. Because, he, yes, he's live on Twitch as well. So you could, like, do the actual raid thing that All way. right. Okay. Wow. All right. Wow. He has clearly... <laughs> oh, my goodness. What? You look very interesting right now. Uh, I believe there is donation goals, I'm going to assume, that make him do things. Because, wow. Oh. All right. Well, I threw uh, it yes, in there. There is. there is. Yep. All right. All right. I actually recorded a quick clip for that uh, that charity stream. I had totally forgotten about it until now. So, guys, go check it out. Thanks for tuning in. See you again next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Did you do